Hello everyone, Jeff with The Green Review here. Today we're talking about herbicide damage on trees and shrubs. First, we need to understand how herbicides work so we can determine how they damage plants. Herbicides work in different ways. Some interfere with how plants photosynthesize, some interfere with the creation of amino acids, and some cause plant cells to grow and multiply unsustainably. Many people have heard of the brand name Roundup. The active ingredient in Roundup and more than 750 other herbicide products available in the United States is a chemical called glyphosate. It can be in a solid or liquid form. Glyphosate-based herbicides all work by inhibiting an enzyme called EPSP synthase. Without that enzyme, most plants and many bacteria are unable to produce some amino acids that they need for making proteins essential for growth. So they turn yellow and die over several days or weeks. Almost all plants use this enzyme, so almost all plants die if treated with enough glyphosate. Treated plant parts absorb glyphosate and it moves through the plant to accumulate in the active growth tissue called the meristem. If the plant is in a dormant phase, especially due to cold, heat, or drought, the chemical may not be absorbed or have much of an effect until the plant begins growing again. If the leaf or plant parts are coated in wax, the glyphosate may not be absorbed in a large enough quantity to kill the plant. And just like if you put a drop of water on a sponge, not the whole sponge is wet, a little bit of a dose doesn't coat the whole plant, and so you might not have enough of a dose to harm the plant. Scientists have developed genetically modified versions of plants that can tolerate glyphosate. In fact, as of 2018, 91% of the cotton, 94% of the soybeans, and 90% of the corn grown in the United States were so-called Roundup Ready varieties. Weeds that are naturally resistant to glyphosate are surviving and spreading at the same time. Glyphosate herbicides are considered to be environmentally friendly because they're virtually non-toxic to mammals, birds, fish, and insects. They have essentially no pre-emergent activity. In other words, they don't prevent plant seeds from germinating in your garden. They don't pen penetrate the woody stems of trees, shrubs, or grapevines. They have essentially no residual soil activity, even when applied at high rates. Glyphosate binds tightly to soil particles and doesn't move in or on the soil to affect untreated plants nearby. So what does all this mean to me? Plants that have weak dose of glyphosate herbicides will have leaves or branches that turn yellow and that may die, but the leaves and branches do not become distorted in shape or size. That brings us to the next group of common herbicides. There are several herbicides that are synthetic auxins. Auxins are basically the hormones that plants use to regulate growth. Because monocot grass plants and dicot broadleaf plants transport chemicals differently, and have different growing points, different herbicides can be used to kill one or the other of these plant types. Grass plants grow new leaves from a crown, while the growth point on broadleaf plants is at the end of the branch and leaf tips. In dicot plants, synthetic auxin herbicides cause unsustainable growth in meristems, so plant stems curl and there is excessive leaf growth. Accelerated growth creates blockages that prevent transfer of water and nutrients. Monocots rapidly metabolize the excess auxins before they build up and before they reach meristems, so they're not damaged by this type of herbicide. There are thousands of herbicide products with one or more of these synthetic auxin herbicide ingredients. Look for 2,4-D, dicamba, MCPA, MCPP, which is sometimes called mecroprop, some of these products can linger in the soil and cause damage later. The use of dicamba is being restricted in some states due to damage to non-target plants. In low, non-lethal doses, these products can cause unusual plant growth. Leaves may be distorted by cupping or curling. The leaf veins may run parallel instead of in a network. The leaf shape may be stretched into a thin line. This is a bur oak, the big wide leaf. This is the treated the low dosage treated uh, bur oak right here, so you can see the distinct difference in the leaf shapes that are being caused by the growth regulator auxin herbicide. Branches may be flattened or curled. Internode distance may be reduced or lengthened. 
depending on the direction of the wind at the time of exposure, only one side of the plant may show damage. It may be only the top or the bottom. Depending on the growth phase of the plant was in during exposure, the leaves, flowers, and fruit may be damaged. If the plant was just leafing out in the spring, whole branches may die, while parts of the plant grow more or less normally. New leaf and branch growth after the exposure may grow normally, indicating the plant will probably recover. If the plant has a few normally shaped leaves, it may be difficult to photosynthesize and it may linger until the next dormant period, but having stored almost no food, it will die over the winter. Herbicides can cause damage by direct contact with the material, but they may also cause damage by evaporating vapors. These vapors may linger for hours or even a couple of days depending on the type of product and the weather conditions and they may drift hundreds of feet away from the original location. Always read label directions for information on how to reduce this type of damage from pesticide drift. If you suspect your plants have been damaged by herbicides that you have not applied, contact your state's Department of Agriculture or local extension office for information on how to make a formal complaint. And this is Jeff with The Greener View. Thanks for watching.